when you write Markdown, you can generally work out what the formatted output is going to look like while you're actually writing it, especially once you've written enough Markdown. But sometimes it might actually be helpful to see what that formatted output is going to look like while you're actually writing it. And today, we're going to be looking at a Vim plugin that will help you do that. And then towards the end of the video, I'll show you what my actual preferred method of doing this is. So the plugin that we're checking out today is called markdown-preview.nvim. Now it says .nvim, but this doesn't mean it's only going to work in NeoVim. It'll also work in regular Vim, but you need one of the newer versions of Vim. That would be uh, Vim 8.1 or greater. Now I'm not sure what the current newest version of Vim is. Someone who actually uses regular Vim, feel free to let me know in the comments section down below. But for me, I use NeoVim, so it's not going to be much of a problem. So besides just generating previews for your regular sort of markdown elements, you can also generate previews for things that are embedded within the markdown. So things like plant UML, mermaid, chart.js, sequence diagrams, and flowchart if you need a couple of diagramming languages. You can also embed dot if you need to do any graph visualization, or TOC for a table of contents. And if you need to do any typesetting of maths, then you can do that with Cartex or Ktex. I'm not actually sure how to say the name for that. I'm going to assume it's probably Cartex though. And the thing that makes this plugin really, really cool is this feature right here. So synchronized scrolling. Now what this means is as you scroll up and down within your Vim document, it'll scroll up and down within the preview as well. So basically where you're looking at within the document is going to relate to where you're looking at in the preview, which I think is kind of cool. So let's have a look at how it works, and then we're going to have a look at how to install it, because it's not as simple as installing most other Vim plugins. So going over to my second screen, I've already got a Markdown document open over here. So basically all you have to do to open up the preview is run the command Markdown Preview, and then what that's going to do is open up a preview within your web browser. So I've already got Brave open over here, so it's going to jump back to that desktop. We'll just put this document on the same desktop as it. So if we just scroll through here, it doesn't scroll through my Vim document, which would be nice to see, but I guess that'd be a bit too much to ask for. But if I do scroll around within the Vim document, it will scroll within the web browser. So I don't just have to scroll. I can scroll way down and then click over here and it'll jump directly to it. Or we can, you know, jump to a line and it'll scroll to that line, which is also kind of cool to see. So we'll jump to like 200 and it'll jump all the way down to the equivalent sort of location within the web browser. Now, obviously, the lines won't line up perfectly, so as you can see, we're on this line right here, and that is this line here. So there's a little bit of a height difference between the two, and I thought that was mainly being caused by the different font sizes, but it seems to be based on how it does the auto-scrolling. So if I just make the font roughly the same sort of size, so that's pretty close, and I change the line again, click back on here, there's still a, a sort of a line difference. So I'm guessing that has to do with the way that it's handling the scrolling. But when you go to a line within your Vim document, it will be shown within the web browser. You might just have to look around a bit to see where it actually is being shown though. Now, as for the actual preview, there's not really a ton to say about it. So if we just go back up to line one, as you can see, we have our main heading here. And this main heading is just a bit of embedded HTML. So instead of doing that, we could do something like a regular header and just say markdown preview. And as we're writing this in here, you might notice something else that's happening. It's actually live updating the document. So you can disable this, and I'll show you this in just a bit. But as you're actually modifying the Vim document, it will actually go and modify the preview as well. So this is pretty much the main reason why you'd want to use a preview method like this. So we can do this on any line. If we modify the level 3 header here, that will then change that. If we then put in, I don't know, a level 2 header, and just put some junk in there, that looks a bit like that. So... The preview style you might notice as being fairly familiar, especially if you've used GitHub a lot. So if we just have a scroll through here, we've got things like code blocks in here. And if we go back over to GitHub, now it will look a little bit different because I have a dark theme on. But you can see we have a code block here and it looks eerily similar. Now the part where you'll notice it looks very, very similar is this right here. So we've got the readme.md here and we've got the header over here. And we go back over to this document here. And as you can see, read me and then the header. Now, if I turn off this dark theme, you'll notice they look very, very similar. So I just zoom out a bit. And if we go back here, back here. Now, pretty much the only difference between the two is that the font size is just a tad different. And also the actual font used for the read me up here is also a tad different. But I think that... The rendering library being used by this plugin is the same rendering library that is being used on the GitHub website. 
but that doesn't mean that we're going to be stuck with our previews actually looking like this. We can go and configure that, and I'll show you that in just a bit. So before we get to that, though, we actually have to look at how to install the plugin. So if I go down to the installation, that'll be somewhere around here. So if you are using Vimplug, what you have to do, there's actually two different ways you can install it. You can either use this line right here or this line right here. So if you have Node.js and Yarn installed, feel free to do this method right here. If you don't though, then you can do this method here. And it'll also show you how to do it with things like day in or min pack as well. If you're using any other plugin manager though, then you'll have to convert one of these commands over to the format being used by that plugin manager. So let's actually get this installed. Now, obviously I already have it installed, but let's go into my Vim configs. So that'll be located either in your .vimrc or in .config slash nvim slash init.vim. So I'm going to be in my init.vim. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to my plug block and then in here we're basically going to drop in this line right here. So plug imco markdown dash preview dot nvim and then this post install hook. So you don't have to write anything out yourself. Just copy in the command and drop it in here. And then once you've done that, basically all you have to do is go into another vim buffer or you could resource your vimrc. And then what you're going to do is just run plug install. Now, obviously, if you're on a different plugin manager than I am, the process will be a little bit different. But if you're on Vimplug, then this is the process you're going to follow. And now, if you don't care about any configuration and all you want to do is just run the plugin the same way that I ran it earlier, all you have to do now is just run markdown preview and it will work the exact same way. But as I said, there is a little bit of configuration we can do as well. So the first thing I wanted to mention was this option right here. Now I'm not going to go in depth into every single option in here. I'll just mention the few that I think are important. So this option right here will let you do auto starts of the plugin. So when you open up a Vim buffer, it'll automatically start up the preview. Now by default, this value is set to zero. But if you want to have the preview start up when you open up the buffer, just set this value to one. And another one I wanted to mention was this one right here. So this will basically make it so you'll no longer have the automatic updates and instead it'll only update when you leave insert mode. Now one of the reasons why you'd want to do this is if you're using kind of slower hardware. You still want the previews but you don't really have the horsepower to make it so the previews are happening as you're actually modifying the document. And my preferred method of doing previews doesn't actually have live updates so I'm kind of used to having this feature disabled. And another one you may want to enable, you probably don't though, is this option right here. So this will basically make it so the markdown preview command can be used in any sort of file because normally what will happen is when you try to run markdown preview and you're not in a markdown file, basically what it's going to do is just, it's going to say the command doesn't exist because the command only exists in the context of a markdown file. But if you'd prefer it to be a global command, then just set this value to be one. I probably should have mentioned how this plugin works earlier, but you should have been able to guess by the fact that it uses Node.js and Yarn. So what it does is the plugin actually sets up a web server and that's basically how it's making it so in Vim when you scroll, it's scrolling within your web browser. Basically what it's doing is every time you scroll within Vim, it's sending a ping to the web server saying, do this action. And because it's a web server, you can also open up this web server to the world if you want to. And there's three options you have to set to actually do that. So the first one is this option right here. So open it up to the world. And by default, this is set to zero. But if you set this value to one, then it's going to be opened up to the world for people to actually see. Now, the other one you have to set is this value right here. So this value will basically set the IP address that someone actually has to enter to connect to the web server. And then the other option you should probably set is this option right here. So this option will let you set the custom port for someone to connect to if they want to connect to the web server. Now you might be wondering what exactly is the point of opening up the plugin to the world? Well let's say that you're using your laptop and you've SSH'd into your desktop computer and the desktop computer has Vim installed on it and has this preview plugin and you've opened up the web server to the world. Well on your laptop what you can do is you can edit your stuff in Vim and then connect to the web server that's on the computer that you've SSH'd into and then see a preview of the document that you're actually editing. Now, I don't tend to find myself in a situation where I actually need to SSH into a system, but judging by some of the stuff people say in the comment section, especially about things like Tmux, it seems like a lot of you guys do. Now, this plugin is really cool, but it has a few issues, and the main issue is that Markdown isn't actually a standard. So this plugin, it works amazingly for GitHub-flavored Markdown, but it's sort of 
only half works for Pandoc Markdown, and most of the stuff that I use is done in Pandoc Markdown, so for me, I'd much rather prefer to use my other method. Now, what I mean by it's not really much of a standard is that there's a couple of things that are the same. So generally things like headings done in this style will work in pretty much every sort of markdown. They'll all have dot points, but sometimes they'll use asterisks instead of dashes. And obviously if you don't support both, this will be a problem when you try to preview one that does use dashes and one that doesn't use dashes. And the big problem that comes up is with markdown tables. Now markdown tables aren't actually defined within the base sort of markdown spec. And this basically means that pretty much every sort of flavor of Markdown does whatever they want. Now, from what I've seen, there seems to be about six or seven different ways that tables can be done in Markdown. And from what I've seen, this plugin only supports the flavor used on GitHub, which is fine, except I mainly do stuff with Pandoc and I don't actually use Pandoc tables and I use tables very, very frequently. So I'd much rather use my method and my method is basically generating PDF files with Pandoc and then opening up that PDF file from Vim. And the other nice thing about this method is because we're basically just going to be using a handler script, you don't just have to support, say, Markdown. You can also support things like trough or any sort of other typesetting format as well. All you'd have to do is just add them into your handler script. Now this has come up quite a few times on my channel before, so I'm not going to go super in depth into it, but I'll roughly show you what it actually does. So if we just go over to my scripts directory and go into the comp script. So this is basically a general compilation script. We've got things in here for handling, like running things like ZSH scripts and things like that, but we're not going to be looking at that part. Really the only line that we care about is this line right here. So when it matches on files with the extension .md, it's going to run Pandoc with all of these options here. Basically, that's just going to generate PDF files with Pandoc set up the way that I want them to be set up. And then if you wanted to support something like, say, LaTeX, all you'd have to do is just add in a new line in this case statement. So we want to match on text documents. And then you just put in whatever the command that you want to use to compile your LaTeX documents. And the same would be true for doing things like trough or anything else as well. And then if we move over to the Vim config, Basically, I have two lines in here to make it so it's really easy to run this. So if we go down to comp, what we're doing here is basically on the leader, capital G key. I don't know why I put it on that key. It's just kind of what I decided to use because a lot of other keys were being used. I might move it to something like Alt-C for compile. I don't know. I don't know if I'm using Alt-C right now. That might end up being what it is. I haven't decided on what I'm going to move it to though. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm saving the document. And then after that, I'm basically running a shell command. And that shell command that I'm running is just comp. And basically, I'm just putting the file name that I just saved into the comp script. And that's just going to cause it to actually compile. And then I've got a second script that I'm using as well. And that script is called opout. So let's have a look at that one. So that script will look a little something like this. Now, if you've seen both these scripts before, it's because I basically took them from Luke Smith. So... I don't remember what video it was, it was a video from a long time ago, and I think they're actually really cool features. So basically what I'm doing is, on these sorts of documents here, so on text documents, on MD documents, on RMD, and so on and so forth, basically what I'm doing is opening up my reader, and my reader is Zathura, and I'm opening up the PDF that has the same name as the file that I passed in. So if I compile a document called assignment.md, the PDF file for that will be called assignment.pdf. It just makes it a little bit easier to work out which file I'm actually trying to open. And then because this is just a case statement, if you wanted to have it so, say, I don't know, your LaTeX documents weren't being saved as PDFs, they're being saved as some other sort of output format, then you just add an extra line within this case statement and then just match on text in that line instead of the line that I've currently got them in. But I'm not really sure what other output format you'd really use. PDFs seem to be a de facto standard to use as an output format, so I'm not really sure what else you'd really feel like using. So I think that's pretty much everything for today's video. Now, obviously, I'm probably not going to keep using this plugin because I have my method of handling this, and I just think my method is a little bit better to use just because it's far more portable. I can easily support other sort of formats. I don't just have to support Markdown. And because I'm already going to be outputting PDFs anyway when I want to say, like, hand the document to someone, it just makes sense for me to continue using the Pandoc method. But if you were doing things like just writing readmes for GitHub or for GitLab, obviously, or just any other sort of format where you don't actually need the PDF output, you just want to see what the document will look like as a more rich text version, 
I think there might actually still be some value to using this plugin, especially if you just need it for Markdown and you're never going to be using any other format like, say, Trough or LaTeX. In that case, I think that there might still be, I guess, a bit of use for this plugin for you. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim Nathan, Andrew Montazar, Peter D. Rode, Tony Donald Ocularia, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech Over Tea, available on Library and YouTube, and available basically anywhere you want for the audio version. Also remember to go check out this channel, also available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell can down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.